Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy Night Stranger back on the channel today. And uh, I really want to discuss something really interesting relating to the existential today. Um, and the title of today's video is What does it really mean to have unbearable lightness of being? And if you guys heard of this term, or if you guys haven't heard of this term, it was famously used by Milan Kundera for his book, The Unbearable Lightness of Being. Um, and it was originally coined by Nietzsche. And Kandora in his book talked about the idea about how a lot of people want to fall. A lot of people have an unbearable urge to fall, which is really interesting. And he talked about the idea of vertigo. He says, when life is supposed to be something that is full of burden, if you think about a guy walking on earth the reason why there is gravity is because the reason why we are walking on this ground is because we are burdened down by something that relates to our earthly selves so things like mortgage things like rent things like paying our bills things like providing food for the family these are the familial average day burdens that hold us down to earth these are the burdens that make us um people um, and he says, when we don't have burdens, we enter this phase of lightness, this unbearable lightness, where there's nothing tying us down to earth, not physically, but mentally. It feels like we don't have this stability in life. You know, we lost the norm, um, the rhythm at which life must go. Therefore, you are unbearably light, right? In your mental state, you don't have anything tying you down to earth. Mentally, you're not walking on the ground anymore. There's no gravity anymore. You know the feeling when you are in, not like zero gravity, I guess no one has felt what zero gravity is like, but this feeling when you're falling, you know this feeling when you're falling, it's like this urge, this, this urge to touch the ground, you know? and you have the premonition of the impact that it's going to have on your knees or whatever and you know it's going to hurt right and that split second from jumping off something to actually hitting the ground it gives me nightmares you know like i don't know if you guys think about this but i think about this a lot and i have a lot of dreams <laughs> when i'm in the middle of an elevator and the elevator is rising and rising and rising and it just falls you know and it just stops and it falls like that's that's something that i connote with this unbearable lightness of being this feeling of falling you know this feeling of being having no control over your bodily sensations whatsoever and I think this is not talked about enough. I think it's so, so interesting because this is a state of life, in my opinion. Um, I was having a conversation with my mom and the main thing we realized behind the lives of people is that people need something to hold on to. And also people need a reason for things to happen. As much as we don't like it, a lot of our lives are governed around reason, right? So the reason why I am sitting here right now is because there's gravity pulling me down, you know? The reason why I'm talking to you is because my mouth is moving, you know, stuff like that. And I'm enunciating words, let's say. So there's always a cause to an effect, right? So that's average day. If a, like in physics, if a cause bumps into an effect, the effect moves, right? So, so um, that is simply how we think as well. So let's draw up the hypothetical example that you have just won the lottery, right? So there is no reason why you should have won the lottery, except for the fact that you just put a number into the, in, into the pool. But you know, for us, that doesn't give us enough of a reason for us to be given such amount of luck. In times of extreme luck, we get this feeling of unbearable lightness. You know, I could only imagine what it feels like to be a lottery winner because how many of us have actually heard 
stories about lottery winners losing all their money or lottery winners giving away all their money or being tricked by other people. This is so common because they don't have anything to hold on to. They don't have a reason for such wealth. Thus, they feel like it's better for their mental state to even gamble it all away, to give it all away because they can't hold on to such a burden, such a pressure on their mental selves right now. I think this causation is reversed when we have this unbearable lightness of being. You know what I think? It's that if you were burdened from the very beginning and you reach a specific goal, let's say, imagine you are a mountaineer and you're climbing a mountain, right? So you have this huge like backpack on you on your back. You've been camping this whole time. It took you five days to get to the top of the mountain. What do you feel when you get to the top of the mountain? You feel achievement, right? You feel pleasure, right? You, you feel like you conquered the world, right? But let's say if you reverse that, let's say if you got to the top of the mountain without doing anything, what, what would you feel? You look around you and you see everyone who has this hypothetical wealth, who has climbed to the top of the mountain. You see yourself as inferior to them. Because you never had to work your ass off to get there. You never had to climb the whole mountain to get there. You floated there, you know? So thus, the burden is now on you. You realize because you didn't carry that burden up the mountain doesn't mean you don't have the burden anymore. It means that while other people can put that burden down and enjoy the time at the top of the mountain, you have to lift that burden up Do you realize how terrifying that is? And that is the reason why a lot of millionaires, a lot of billionaires say, if I help you make a million dollars within the next two, three, four years, if I help you make it, you would not be able to keep it because you never had to experience what it's like to have $1,000, $10,000, $100,000. And I think that is so, so crucial because if there was no step to the ladder and you go from floor one to floor five, you know, the people you meet, the lifestyle you have, the experiences you make are completely different on floor five than floor one, hypothetically right? And this is one of the central reasons why I feel like luck can be a gift, but it also can be a curse. You know, extreme luck in this scenario, saying that you win the lottery, because you did nothing to get to that point. It was not a burden that you had to set down. It's a burden that you have to carry now. Think about a lottery winner. If you put yourself in the minds of a lottery winner and you get the lottery, what is the first thing that you're going to think? Oh, who's going to steal my money now, right? Which one of my relatives are looking at my cash and thinking, oh, I can exploit it off them. You might be thinking, oh, how do I deal with my financial situation? How do I invest it so I can actually keep this money? There are so many steps that you never had to go through because at that time of extreme wealth, you wouldn't know. Maybe you never even kept your money in a bank. These are steps that you have to learn in the process of achieving wealth, in accumulating wealth, as an example, right? And if you never went through these steps, the only logical answer and the only reasonable, reasonable, reasonable outcome is that you lose it all because you can't retain what you have. And I think this is really interesting because don't you feel like if you're that mountaineer and you climb to the top of the mountain versus you are a person who floated to the top of the mountain, surely the mountaineer would feel like, oh, the top of the mountain feels stable to me. I feel like I'm, I have my feet on the ground, you know? I feel like I feel like I deserve this. Whereas that's why we coined the term have your head in the clouds. Because the person who floats to the top of the mountain 
quite virtually have their head in the clouds because they did nothing to get there. It's all pure imagination. Even if it's reality, I, I wager that it is imagination. Even if it's a reality that you won the lottery, you got to that top of the mountain without doing anything. I wager that it's imagination because in, in, in a number of days, in a number of weeks, in a number of years, such easy wealth, such easy outcome would not last, at least for the majority of the people. And I think that is why life is fair. I think, I think life is fair in terms of, in terms of how much luck we gain and how much we lose because of it. I think that's one of the most interesting things. Life is fair in terms of happiness or how or what potential you have to exploit the happiness that you can obtain. So in the sense that we might not all end up with the same monetary value, we might not end up in the same what we call societal value, we might not have the same status, we might not work the same jobs. However, I think that we all at the start of our lives have the same potential to be happy. I think that's very interesting. I don't know whether I, I articulated my point very well, but I do think because if, even if you get lucky, that's not happiness. I don't think that's happiness. I think that's dopamine. Even if you coin it as happiness, I wager that in two years you will be unhappy. It's also interesting for decisions. Let's say you take a decision now and you are momentarily happy. <laughs> and you have gratitude for, like, in, in, like instantaneous gratitude, whatever they call it. Um, instant gratification, that's what they call it. You might not have gratification two years later. That's why I think it's actually a good mindset to work with the harder fruit. To work harder to get where you want to be. That's why working hard is so crucial. We might think it's, oh, it's not true that we, we have to work hard. It's easy to get there. No, it's not. No, it's not. What's hard is not getting there. Trust me, what is hard is not getting there. What is hard is staying there. You know? So take, uh, like, life in the simplest terms. Look at a YouTuber who has an explosive growth, let's say, with doing one video. I had this one video who got 10k views. I have never been able to replicate that again. Because I got that so fast. Because I never had the process of getting a video with 1k views, you know. I never even consistently got 500 views. So getting 10k views, it was never something that was in my power to replicate. So I realized I had to grind another year to realize, you know, here's how I build an audience. How, here's how I engage an audience. You would fall back to the level that you were if you think that luck is the only factor influencing your life. So yeah, an unbearable lightness of being is a reaction to luck. And I think this is very interesting. Thank you so much for listening to this video. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye.